Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University. In this video, I'm going to go through an example illustrating how to linearize a nonlinear dynamic system about an equilibrium point. After working it out by hand, then we'll explore the results using Simulink. And let's write down the equations that you need in order to linearize a dynamic system. So here's our dynamic system, it's a function f, vector function, and its arguments are x and u, the states and the input. And then the output y is equal to another nonlinear function, g, again, a function of x and u. Now, we're going to use this notion of an equilibrium point, so we'll need to define that. Okay, so an equilibrium point, um, and I'll be a little bit generous about this and say that it will be denoted as a combination of x, 0, and u, 0. And what it satisfies is that uh, f at x0 and u0 is equal to 0. And what that means is that if you were to start the dynamic system from this point and let it go in a sense, then x dot wouldn't change. And so x wouldn't change. Okay, so now what we'll do is define x of t as x0, the equilibrium point, plus some quantity delta x. And I'll put the underbar to indicate a vector under the whole symbol delta x. We have the same thing for u of t, so that's u0 plus delta u. I'm being verbose about the dependency on time here. And we have the same thing for y. So y of t is equal to y0 plus delta y. Now just keep in mind that um, given an x0, u0 combination, this equilibrium point, that it really implies y0. Now once we're done with the linearization, this is what we want to end up with. Delta x dot is equal to a, a state matrix A times delta x. And delta x is a function of time, of course, and then we'll have the uh, input matrix B, which comes out of the linearization process times delta u. And then we have an output equation, delta y is equal to C times delta x uh, plus D times delta u. And there we go. That's what we want. Now, how do we create A, B, C, and D? And we do a Taylor series expansion and pull off the first term. And so that means that A is equal to the partial of F with respect to X, evaluated at X0, U0. And similarly, we'll have a B, a C, and a D matrix. So the B matrix is partial of F with respect to U, the input. Again, evaluated at X0, U0. And then C and D look very similar, except they're the partial of G with respect to X for C, and the partial of G with respect to U for D. Now let's do an example. So we'll have a second order differential equation, a nonlinear differential equation. And let's see, let's do uh, y double dot plus 2y, so far it's linear, plus sine y equals u. So of course our nonlinear term is that sine y. And let's go ahead and define some states. x1 is y, and x2 is equal to y dot. And now we can continue on with our state space representation. So x1 dot is equal to y dot, and that's just x2. And x2 dot is equal to y double dot. And now we can substitute in the differential equation above. We get negative 2y minus sine y plus u. And then we can replace the y's with our states. So we have negative 2x1 minus sine x1 plus u. Great. Now we can just write down uh, this function of x. So let's write it as x dot is equal to f, again a function of x and u. And that's equal to this vector quantity. 
you see we have in the lower element negative 2x1 minus sine x1 plus u. And up here we have an x2. And we should also write down the output expressions that defines our g of x and u. So g x u is just equal to this little thing x1. Okay, so now we have to figure out our equilibrium point. So what do we do for x0 and u0? Well, we have to find a combination such that f is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and say that we want uh, y and time equals 0 to be pi over 2 and y dot to be 0. So we can write that in our states as x0 is equal to uh, pi over 2 in that element and 0. And so what this means then is that if we evaluate f at x0, u0, we will get the following expression. Let's see. We'll have negative pi minus sine pi over 2 plus u0. And up here we just have 0. And so this thing has to be equal to 0. So this gives us an equation that we can solve for u0 that will uh, let us obtain that desired equilibrium point of x at, at time equals 0 and actually um, the point that we want to linearize about. So u0 is just pi plus 1. Well now let's go ahead and calculate the a, b, c, and d matrices. So a is the partial of f with respect to x and then we have to evaluate that expression at x0, u0. Let's see. So what we'll have when we make these substitutions are 0 up here. And down here we'll have a negative 2 minus cosine evaluated at um, pi over 2. And see we'll have a 1 and a 0. And now if we go ahead and do these valuations, we get 0, negative 2, 1, and 0. There we go. There's a nice constant A matrix. There's our linearized A matrix. What a beautiful thing. Well, let me hog out some space here, and we'll do our B, C, and D matrices. So B is the partial of F with respect to U. And that's also evaluated, of course, at X0, U0. And that gets pretty simple. So let's see. We have a 0 and 1. And then C is the scalar, uh, the partial of the scalar G with respect to x, the vector, evaluated at x0, u0. And so now we get a row vector. And that is 1, 0. Great. Now we have the D matrix, and this is just the partial of the scalar G with respect to the scalar U, evaluated at x0, U0. And that's super simple, so that's just 0. Great, so now we have our A, B, C, and D matrices, and we can put this whole system together and take a look at it. Okay, so delta x dot is equal to Again, just rewriting the matrix from the previous page, 0, negative 2, 1, 0. That's times delta x. And we have our B matrix, 0 and a 1, times delta u. And then our output equation, delta y, is equal to c, times delta x. I'll just leave out the d. That's kind of boring. As a reminder, um, we can look at what our x, y, and u really are. So that's x0 plus delta x. And more specifically, uh, we know what x0 is, of course. So here we get uh, pi over 2 and 0 plus delta x. And then u is equal to u0 plus delta u. And let's see, so u0 was uh, 1 plus pi. And 
cos delta u. Now these expressions are going to be useful for us when we play around with this in Simulink so that we can actually see what x is and possibly u and of course y. So y is y0 plus delta y and y0 if we calculate that from x0 and u0 is just pi over 2 plus delta y. So that's it. So now let's just go into Simulink and play around with this a bit. Okay, so here we are. Let's fire up Simulink. And I'll create a new model. And let's start coding this system in. So what I'll do is grab a function block. And I'll use this for simulating the uh, dynamic system. So the output of this is going to be the input to a couple integrators, but the input to this uh, function block is going to be, well, let's see, we need both u and y, right? Because f is a function of u and y. And my function block is actually going to be f. So I'll just label these signal lines. And let me grab a couple integrators. So this red line that's going into this integrator is really y double dot. So we integrate it once to get y dot, integrate it again to get y. And let's throw that output into a scope. And we'll label some things as y. Here's our y double dot, or y dot, I'll use y prime. Here's y double dot, and I'll use y double prime. Okay, so now we can see it a little bit better. And bring this back. This is my y that is an argument to the function f. And why don't we put that in? So we have our so we have 2 times u2, that's y, minus sine of u2, again, that's y, that's the second argument in that mux block plus u1, which is u. Now, let's create the u0 quantity. And its input is time, and so I can grab time or create time in the uh, Simulink model just with a clock block. we label that properly u0 and let's get this typed in here we go it's 1 plus pi now I have to set some initial conditions the initial condition on y was pi over 2 so that's this the output of this integrator and we'll set up the integration method use a second order method 0 0.01 should be ample fast enough. And let's run it. There's y. Beautiful, just sitting there at pi over 2, exactly what it should do. Basically, we're letting the system go, and it just sits there. Because we have 1 plus pi as the input, it's nicely consistent with our equilibrium point of pi over 2. So now let's look at the linearized system. Right, so this one that we just coded up was the full nonlinear system. So here's our linearized system. There's our A and our B matrix, our C matrix, and zero, and just zero there. And here's our initial conditions. There they are. Zero, zero, because our initial conditions, of course, for the delta system is zero, zero, the delta x system. Now, let's do something a little bit more interesting with the input. We have to put in our input u, but let's do something a little bit more interesting where we also have a extra input. Let's use a pulse function. So we have the u that keeps us at the equilibrium point, but then we'll have a little bit of delta u on top of that u0. I'll denote that with a capital D, du. 
Now we should make this a relatively small input, so let's see what should we use. How about 0.5? That's really not that small, but let's see what happens with that. Two second uh, period and 50% pulse width. So a nice little pulse train on top of our U0. Now into our delta x system, our linearized system, we just put in the delta u. And so out of this comes delta y. Run it. Boom. And there is our little delta y. Or to compare that to the nonlinear system, we would need to um, add to it the y0. And y0 is just x0 in this case. And that's just pi over 2. So let's get that in there. There's our y0. Pi over 2, wonderful. Run it. Have to make sure it has a unique name. Now let's take a look at this. And there's our, our linearized version of y. Now it should be very similar to the nonlinear y, but not exact. So let's try to compare that. What we'll do is just grab another mux block and run these two signals into the same scope. bit. Ah, that's pretty. Save it. Yeah, we don't really need to save it. Let's just go ahead and run it. There we go. And we can see that the two lines are fairly close. The yellow line is the full nonlinear system and the pink one is the linearized version. Now that was for that pulse train of 0.5. As we decrease the amplitude of this pulse train, we should get a closer, closer fit. So let's say 0.1 for the pulses. Oh yeah, it's getting much closer now. Which makes sense, right? Because the linearization is valid for um, small deltas in U. And now that's very close for, with a very small delta U. So to summarize, we started with the equations that allow you to linearize a nonlinear dynamic system about some equilibrium point. And then that was followed by a second order example where we picked the steady state input u0 to achieve a desired equilibrium point x0. And then finally, we explored the solution a bit using Simulink. So once again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University, and thanks for watching.